Recently, I got hold of a Pulsar 23 from Soma Lab, thanks to my good friends at Signal Sounds, and I've been exploring it a wee bit and using it in different ways, and tonight I wanted to try it out with something that I haven't used before, and I thought I would show you the kind of setup of what I'm going to do before you actually hear what I've done with it so that it makes sense. So if I spin you around here, you'll see that I have my Pulsar 23 here. For those of you not familiar with the Pulsar 23, there are four separate channels. We've got a kick drum, a bass kind of sound, a snare drum, and then a hi-hat. In order to control the Pulsar 23, I have this wonderful MIDI controller here, which I'm sure you're familiar with. This is our Churia Keystep Pro. The reason I'm using this is that it's got four separate channels, so I can control a few different things at once. And it's also got a whole bunch of different connectivity. Now, specifically for the Pulsar 23, there are a number of different drum gate outputs which I can then connect up whoop, via these colourful wires over here and the reason that I've plugged them in here and then they kind of connect off onto these alligator clips is because the Pulsar 23 uses posts instead of using standard mini jack connections or anything. So in order to connect from mini jack over to the Pulsar 23 format I've got these cables coming in. They're kind of uh, organised in such a way so that the colours make sense for my synesthesia because number four is yellow, number three is orange, number two is a kind of green and number one well is kind of nondescript so that actually helps me remember things. Now this means that if I press on the first few keys here you will hear the different drum sounds hopefully because it will be sending out a gate to the pulsar so that is the kick drum and because it's a gate you can hear it holds it open as long as the gate is open or the key is pressed down. Snare drum and a hi-hat. Now you'll notice that the bass sound here is not attached to the second key and that is because the cool thing about the bass channel on the Pulsar 23 is that you can pitch it or you can control the pitch over CV and so if you look up here I have got a blue cable which is coming from voice number three of the Keystep Pro and then it's going all the way over here I'm converting it again from mini jack onto the crocodile clip and then whoop it is connected to the CV input of the bass channel, which means, in theory, hopefully, if I press one of these keys or different keys, it will play the bass channel like a kind of synth voice. And it's monophonic, obviously. What I want to do now is essentially uh, write a wee thing on this. You can see here I've kind of uh, already put in a wee bass line, so if I press play, Turn up the volume. And then of course I want to add some drums in. So I've got track one, which is a drum track. And I can add some effects in. The second part of the setup is that I'm taking the clock out from the Arturia Keystep Pro here. A MIDI output is coming from this blue MIDI cable that you can see snaking its way up. It's coming into the endorphin shuttle control here. This is the shuttle pilot or something like that, I think. But basically, whenever I hit play, you'll see this lights up like a Christmas tree. And what's happening here is that it's converting the MIDI clock from the MIDI DIN cable into a whole bunch of different divisions, clocks, starts, stops, resets, and all that kind of thing. If I turn down all of the other elements of the Pulsar 23 for now and just play this kick drum. Well, there's a rogue snare in there somewhere, but whatever. If I just do that for now, then I can show you one of my favorite tricks or patches which is to take the envelope trigger here and then connect it up to the what the fuck or WTF post and you can hear what it does to the sound of the kick so this is it without it connected up and then oh! 
for the next step. What I'm going to do is patch up track number four on the Keystep Pro up to an oscillator. Uh, and I'm just going to control that particular voice from the actual Keystep Pro. So I plug the one volt per octave into voice number four. That's the pitch output of the, the fucking Keystep Pro. And then I plug in the gate output of this into, uh, where do we go? An envelope generator, which I've got one over here somewhere. Although I've moved everything about recently and now I can't find anything. For those of you not familiar with the Eurorack system, I then have to connect it up my envelope into the CV input of my VCA so that it'll uh, open the amplifier or whatever it is when I hit the gate. Regular viewers of this channel with a keen eye may notice that I'm going to be using my patch bay here to connect up to my audio interface which is far, far away. Alrighty, now I've got that set up. You can hear when I play the keyboard, it will play my Dixie uh, from IntelliGel. Very nice indeed. What I want to do though is add some effects on it because right now that is pretty damn boring. And so uh, I've got a Milky Way here from Endorphins. So what I've done is taken my Dixie VCO, I've run it into this uh, feedback module thing, which is like a preamp module to beef it up a wee bit. It then runs into the endorphin Milky Way, and from the Milky Way it goes into the Instro R bar. And if you're not familiar with this, this is like a granular thing. So that's the basics of my patch with the Keystep Pro controlling the Pulsar 23 and my modular system. I have to say that I actually really quite like how this sounds at the moment. Part of that is because the drums from the Pulsar sound incredible. It's one of the reasons that I was interested in the device in the first place. But also, to be honest, the R bar from Instruo, whenever you add that on anything melodic, it just gives you this beautiful layer of kind of magic that I think makes everything sound so much better. Now at this point, I want to go on and progress it a wee bit and, you know, turn it into music rather than just a patch. So I'm going to go in and tweak things, kind of add in some sequences, modulate different things so that it doesn't sound as static. And that's one of the beautiful things about the Pulsar is that you can modulate so many different parameters in there in a variety of different ways, whether you're clocking it internally, you're using its kind of own looper thing or using external sequencers or modulation points. And because I've got my modular system sitting here and it's all clocked together and everything, I'm probably going to use that to send different envelopes to different parts of the drums and effects and all that kind of thing and see where I go. I'm going to probably be doing a lot more experiments with this particular setup because I think having the Keystep Pro here with all of its different kind of connection options means that you can just really, it just gives you so much control really easily over a whole bunch of things because it's not just MIDI output, it's also got the gate and, you know, the actual CV output. Uh, we'll see what I do with that over the next wee while. Thanks for watching. If you've got any questions about any of this, let me know and I will go read the manual and uh, include it in a future video. Goodbye.